The life before quarantine was totally different when you were a little boy playing Fortnite with your boys versus the life you have right now. And the life you have right now is much worse than it were before. You have depression and you can't escape it. And so here I am for you, man, because I know that this process is fucking painful, man. And I've been through that and I know how to cure it. So this video won't be some generic video about depression, like seven signs you have depression, how to cure it, make this depression test oh call this support that doesn't care about you take those drugs that will even worsen your fucking depression so we can make profit no I'm here the guy that went through depression and I listed seven or eight things I'm not sure that helped me overcame the depression and if you will overcame this depression I guarantee you that the life will be even better than before the quarantine so sometimes it gets so fucking hard and painful that you just have to lay on the bed and listen to some sad music, right? And honestly, man, I used to love that too, you know, just lay down, relax, do not think about anything and just be with yourself alone, right? But as I grow older and I had the depression for a longer period of time, I stumbled upon a study on sad music and generally what music does to your brain. Maybe it's unimaginable to just, you know, lay down and listen to happy music when you're fucking sad and your life is shit and you're about to cry, right? I totally get that. But this graph shows you how happy, energetic music versus sad music has an impact on you and you can see that when you listen to sad music your mood will drop even under the baseline so you will feel even worse than before listening to the music and if you will pump some happy energetic music then it will fucking increase your mood significantly right and the reason is that because when you listen to sad music you hear all the time some sad shit either about breakup or some life situation that is hard and you can relate to that right and so you repetitively over and over again are repeating those sad songs and when you say something thousands of times your subconscious mind will take it as a fact so if in the music is something sad for example i'm sad and i'm crying then you will be much more likely to be sad and crying than if you would listen to some happy energetic song that will be just happy and invoke good feelings in you right so even though i know it's really hard to just listen to happy song from either your childhood or something that you have memories on when you are sad and you're about to cry but trust me just try that after this video late or this night lay down and don't play another love or uh, i don't know those type of shit that are sad and just pick one song that you are listening as a kid that you have memories on or you just like that is happy and energetic and see your fucking mood change just vibe on that song force yourself to vibe and sing and just smile because you are what you are focusing on right so now let's close eyes bro both close eyes and let's think of something really sad right the thing that makes you so fucking sad and depressed now your body's kind of stressed and sad and maybe heavy. And now think of something, some good memory or something that makes you smile, anything, bro. And now you feel the relief, you maybe smile. That's because your body reacts on what's in your mind. Therefore, you have erection when you think of something sexual with the girl you like. Therefore, you wake up in the middle of the night when you have nightmare. So if you can invoke fear by imagining that someone is insulting you whilst you're going home in the middle of the night alone, why can't you invoke good feelings in you when you imagine and concentrate on the right thing? And that leads me to the third thing that is still keeping you depressed. And that is the way you talk. You always wish for something. You always want something differently. You want this, you want that. But you never appreciate a single thing. Meaning you're constantly putting yourself in this feeling like you're not enough. That everything is bad and like as if the positivity does not exist in this world. And from that comes the stress and the anxiety that you have for a, such a long time that culminated in depression. Like, can you fucking remember when was the last thing where you literally stopped and was genuinely grateful and happy that you have something or have happened? And can you remember where you were crying, where you were whining about something, that that shit is bad or 
unfair. You can, right? So why won't those feelings that are making you sad because you're always whining about something and you're wishing for something, where you literally hold the power of creating yourself in the hormonal system, the hormones that will make you feel good by focusing on the positive thing and on the right thing and feeling grateful for them. Like from that statement, I can literally say that you don't want to be happy. I have a friend that has depression for like five years and every time I tell him some advice that helped me got from depression, he will always answer, yeah bro, I have such a big depression that I can escape from. Why bro? Don't put yourself in impossible situations where you hold the power, bro. You are the reason why you are depressed. Remember that. You have to just learn how to make yourself happy. You have to learn to be happy and create happiness in your life. And the way you can achieve that is by a system that kind of seems stupid. And at the first, when I heard about that and I thought of it that I should be doing it, it seemed to me very stupid and like it's some bullshit that won't help me but the thing is called gratitude journaling and it's about you writing down things that you're grateful for every single day so when i started doing this habit it was something like i am grateful for the forest i have in my town i am grateful for the room i live in i am grateful for my rgb mouse and that was literally it bro and I know to your ego, it sounds like it's some unnecessary thing and it's like, you know, why should you do it? You can do something, you know, better, right? And what this habit will teach you is to literally feel happy. Like I said, you purposely put on some sad music, you're thinking about only the bad stuff, you're waiting always about something, you're wishing for something, but you never appreciate the things that you have. And this three or five sentences every single day will learn you how to feel grateful for that. And I remember that even when I got outside, I was literally and genuinely happy from the sun shining, bro. You think that money will bring you happiness, the girl will bring you happiness, but what actually will bring happiness is you and how you view things. And if you don't learn how to view things so that you can genuinely feel happy, you will never feel happy and that's the reason why i have those monks that are genuinely happy from just waking up and being able to meditate versus those rich guys that are fucking angry and there's no their alarm oh i have to work again you know i'm in this big ass house with millions on my bank account beautiful wife next to me beautiful kids and my lambo in garage but i still complain because they can appreciate the things but what you can clearly see is the main cause of your depression and why you got into depression in the first place for me it was heartbreak and maybe it's the same for you and even it sucked bro like i was so down at that time right now i see that as the best thing that could have happened to me because without that i wouldn't be the guy that i'm right now and so i wish this for you you have to transfer your point of view from viewing the problem or the things that caused you go into depression as a good thing. And you have on that literally a law from Newton, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So when you fucking do something painful, you will gain from that something good. When you will go and work out, you will feel better after it and you will have better body and health. And when you get from depression, you will leave it with mental toughness, a lot of lessons and a much bigger and stronger mindset. But George, how is that that you have gym rats that are experiencing the pain, that are going to the gym, that are going through the bad process, but are still depressed? The reason is that, that they have fucked up self-identity or self-image. Self-image and how you see yourself determines what type of person you are, what seems to you easy or impossible or what you can achieve or cannot achieve. Thereby willpower, discipline and your skills does not always plays the role if you can achieve it or not, if you can change or not, or if you can get out of depression or not. Because if you see yourself as a guy that can get out of depression, you can't access the things that will help you get out of it. So a guy that is saying I'm dumb at math will always be dumb at math whether he is actually dumb or not. A fat guy that is telling oh I have sweet tooth and I love junk food will always be fat and won't lose weight because he accept 
that he is fat guy and loved those junk foods. An F student won't increase his performance even though he's studying because the ingrained self-image of an F student is keeping him from accessing the parts of the brain that will get him A's. And if the F student gets F, it's a proof to him that he is actually an F student. Therefore, he will even more ingrain his self-image that he is a F guy and he can't get straight A's. And for you, your proof is that you are sad, that you are crying, that you can't smile, that you feel like shit 24 seven. This is your proof that you are this depressed guy that is in depression and can't escape it. So in order to escape depression, you have to change point of view on yourself. And you can do that by visualizations and affirmations. Now first affirmation, when you say something a thousand times, like I said, the brain will take it as a fact. So if I will say, I will affirm to my mind, I am happy and I am not depressed. I have a beautiful life and I'm so grateful that I can be in this world a fucking thousand times instead of listening to sad music and repeating that you wish that you had different life and better mood then you will fucking feel different and your mind will take it as a fact. And on the other hand, you have visualization. There was done an experiment where you had three groups. One was shooting on a hoop, one doesn't at all, and one was only imagining. And the group that was only imagining shooting on the hoop and the group that was actually shooting on the hoop had improved after a month very, very similarly, even though the first group hadn't thrown a single basketball on the hoop. Now you see the power that you hold in your mind. The things you imagine, your mind will take it as a fact and you can learn by just imagining it. And on the other hand, if you will imagine something good or positive, you can hijack your hormonal system and your hormonal system will create hormones of happiness. For the visualization, just imagine something that will make you feel better. So some good memories or your dream life that is really detailed, like how you drive, you know, your dream car or how you're, you know, laying on the sand and feeling the wind that blows on your face, you know, something that will really create good emotions. But also you can see yourself differently, like with muscles or with mental toughness or without depression or how you smile. The seventh thing that is still keeping you depressed is the imbalance in your soul. Like night follows day, moon follows sun, extension must be followed by relaxation. And if not, it could cause sleep problems and it could even inhibit your hormone system that determines, for example, your depression levels. If I were to ask you what relax is, you would said sleep, sitting around, lazing around, doing nothing. But relaxation is not always passive. It's not lazing around, but keeping off the stress, fear, restlessness in your body and soul so that you are able to receive energy and invest it in other things. The only time you relax is in the bed and perhaps you can't even fucking sleep. You're sleep deprived because you check your phone before sleep, you eat before sleep and all that shit. So to get balance in soul and cut off the stress that is culminating in depression, you have to do four things. Journaling is you sitting with a piece of paper and a pen and writing down the thoughts that you have. The reason why you should do that is that right now those thoughts are heavy. You can't get out of that fucking head. Those thoughts that you have are causing you distress and the bad feeling. And when you have the pen and the paper, you hold the power of giving those bad thoughts and putting them on the fucking paper. Therefore you were relieved from the pain and from the stress and the negative thoughts. No overthinking, no crying about past, you leave those negative thoughts on the paper. That's the reason why you fucking have to do it, bro. The second is meditation. The meditation is about you trying to sit and do not think about anything. And guess what when you don't think about anything? You also don't have negative thoughts. Therefore, your mind can rest and you can just put the stress from you. Also, with that, you will increase your attention span, therefore, you will be more likely to achieve success because you can focus and from focused work, you can create value that people will pay you for. And second, if you can focus and you have higher attention span, you can use that in relationships because when you can focus on girl, 
you can listen to her, you're able to be more likable for her and therefore you can maybe sleep with her, right? Or improve your relationship with your current girlfriend or wife. Now the third thing, you may use this whilst meditation, sometimes I will use some nature sounds or you can use the binaural beats or some frequency like 427 or I don't know, I don't know about frequencies but I just found them very pleasurable. And what those hertzes will do for your brain is that it will activate like this special part of your brain that will relax you and you will just feel like in heaven and your brain will rest. Because like you feel differently with music on, you will feel differently with this special type of music that will fucking relax your brain and hack those parts that will make you relax and you know release the stress. And the fourth last and most important thing is your breath. You can't fucking breathe. For my whole life I was breathing only through chest and I thought that it's a deep breath and it will relax me, right? But what I wasn't realizing is that I do not only have chest but also tummy. And the tummy and the chest is the part, what I call the frontal part of your body. And when you have those two things blocked, you can access the positive energy, okay? Most of the men have blocked this energy, uh, have blocked this part and they can't access positive energy. They can't even last longer in this bed because this part is fucking blocked, okay? So the way you can unblock your frontal part of your body is by breathing to tummy and then to your chest. That is called the yogic breath and it looks like this. Okay, so it's like a wave in a sea and you just transfer your breath from tummy to your chest and then from chest to tummy again. What also have helped me are breath works. I will leave down one, one of my favorite breath work that I do every single day and I guarantee you that if you will do this, you will feel like in the fucking different world. When I first did my breath work, I felt so awesome and I told it to all my friends that bro, just do that. It's like on drugs, like literally it's on drugs. You feel like you are on drugs but in a healthy way and it releases all your stress and you feel so fucking good. But more important than the yogic breath and the breath work is that you will breathe through your nose. Even if you will exercise, even if you will play video games, even if you will do any type of shit, you want to breathe through nose because nose is what will bring the positive energy to your brain that will bring the oxygen. Therefore, you will feel more alive and more alert and happy and energized. You don't want to be this shallow breather that is <sighs> and then you will have fucked up jawline. You will look like a fucking dickhead. When I see some dickhead like looking nerdy and playing video games, I can fucking see that they are breathing through mouth. You can fucking see that. And when you breathe through nose, you're shape your face shapes differently you will attract more girls and you will just be healthier and have lower depression levels just by your fucking nose and don't forget to breathe fully with the yogic breath because one yogic breath with closed eyes will release so fucking much tension that you need to fucking release not in Pornhub by your penis but by your pump but but by your nose release this fucking stress. I can't talk. I'm recording for one hour, bro. This is all. I'm George Line. I'm the guy that was depressed and now it's not. And so if you like my style and you like those type of videos and those improving tips, then I would suggest you to go down, click on the subscribe button because with this one simple click, bro, you will join our line pack in the jungle. And here, our community is only improving and also growing. So if you want to be part of this special community, join as fast as you fucking can because you don't want to miss those important lessons and those hacks that will improve your life and will culminate in having the best life you can fucking imagine, right? I'm going for a run now. So, bye bro.